So hi from my side as well. My name is Sebastian Daschner. I'm a freelancer based in Munich, Germany, and I work in the Java E enterprise section. And I'm also, if you know about the JCP, the Java community process, I'm an expert, expert group member of the JAXRS expert group. And today I want to talk about putting hypermedia back in REST with uh, JAXRS and Java E technology. So who of you has been using REST in real world projects? Hands up. Who of you has been using REST of or has heard about REST? Yeah, a few at least. Okay, today I want to show you um, first what REST is about or at least what it's considered to be. Because in most projects REST is not um, used how it's meant to be used. S so maybe... So maybe you have seen um, something like this. This is supposed to be an HTTP request, right? It shows an HTTP method post to some URL and some request and response body. And here you can see you're posting to some URL, which is called do some action, like a method or a verb, which actually performs something, like do something or make something. And you can see some request um, parameters and some response parameters, right? And if you look at it, it somehow feels like a method call over HTTP, right? Like an RPC, like a remote procedure call over HTTP. And probably this is not what a REST is meant to be. Because... Yeah, as you can see, we are, we are calling post to some verb, to some method, and it doesn't even matter if it's a do something or even get something to read some information. And um, REST is about resources, right? So the resources in your API, which means your URLs, should in fact reflect the business objects of your application. So if you're talking about some user management software, for example, your business, your domain objects are users or any objects you have, like books, articles, whatever, objects, and not verbs. And the URLs should also reflect these objects. Like this example. You have a get call with an HTTP method get to a user's resource. And this reflects the list of users in your potential user management software. And here you can see the response, here it's XML, but it doesn't matter, with the list of your users and one specific user. And this Duke here, for example, has an ID. And you might assume if you have this list of users here, you also have a, res for a resource for one specific user, like the Duke here. So that URL might probably be something like user slash one two three four five with the ID, right? So you probably have seen something like this in real world projects. えっと、このこの例では、えっと、and I will, I will come back in a second um, about what the URLs are, um, how they are constructed. But here you could see that somewhat semantic HTTP approach was used because now you're using get to read some information because you're getting on some resource, right, rather than executing a method with post do something or post read all users or get all users. And the same thing is true if you would call an action like create a user in that user example like this one here. 
here we are posting to the list of users resource to actually create a new resource in this case a new user so that would be like posts create new user but here we are posting the data of one specific user of one newly created user to the server and as a response we get a status code back in this case 201 created because as you can see not everything is 200 okay there are several status codes and the 201 created sta status code tells us that an, uh, a new resource was created on the server which is the case here for that user あの、ネーム、デューク、あと、え、コメント、えっと、yeah, and also we got the um, location HTTP header back, which uh, points to the um, location of the newly created resource of the new created user here. And that is exactly the point where hypermedia kicks in. Because in hypermedia, you're linking resources which are somewhat related to your current resource together in your meter information as part as um, your response from the server. えっと、レスポンスが来た時に、え、あの、ここであの、ハイパーメディアというものを、あの、実際使っていきますと。あの、必要になってくる局面になってくるかと思います。え、レスポンスの中で、え、the linking resources together as the meter information. あの、リソースへのリンクをえ、HTTPのリ、あの、レスポンスの中に含めていくということで、え、ま、その時にハイパーメディアを適用していくとすごく使いやすいと。使いやすいというか、ま、ここでそういう局面が出てきます。And yeah. if you take the same example as before, the list of users here, um this is another approach using hypermedia and now you're no longer using the ID to somewhat implicitly create your URLs in your client so which means that you're longer assuming that the URLs might be user slash one two three four five taken from the ID rather you're pointing directly to the ID of the specific user here in your link <laughs> え、直接明示されて受け取るのではなく、え、リレーション、リレーションでセルフ、そこからあの、え、ま、リンクという形でリソースへのリソースを明示していると。hreflの中にということですね。なのであの、ユーザー and the self-relation here tells us that this URL, the user slash one two three four five, belongs to the contain containing object, the user here in XML. And let me show you another example. So what you just saw is that the server gets back the control of the URLs, how they are cr uh, created. Because now the client is no longer assuming how the URLs look like, rather than the server is pointing directly to the URLs. And now the server could even change the URLs on his side and the clients wouldn't break because the clients are going directly to the URL which is provided from the server. えっと、クライアントの側で、え、え、ユーザー and this here is another example which shows another um, advantage of using hypermedia. This is a bookstore example. So if you think of Amazon with uh, which has an API to buy books, right? And this is the resource of one book um, with a name and an ISBN and link and authors and stuff like that. And also we have some links again here with the self-relation 
notebook slash 12345. And now we also got some functionality called add to cart, which points us to a URL where we could access the functionality of how that book could be added to your shopping cart in the API. え、ま、例えばアマゾンをちょっと今例に出してたんですけど、え、その本をカートに追加する機能っていうのがどこのリソースがあるかっていうのをサーバー側からレスポンスで返し、返すことによってクライアントサイドでのえ、コントロールではな
could be like a drop down in your application like uh, right like in a form and this is certainly client logic and should rely uh, reside on the client but everything else can be now accessed in a more dynamic way because it can be changed anytime and the server gets back in control of how this functionality is used any questions so far So now you see what power hypermedia gives you to your API because certainly if you have some actions like this here you don't need to document your APIs because I don't know how you use your REST APIs in your projects but normally you have some kind of documentation right how your resources are used or should be used which we uh, the HTTP method post some information here we need XML or JSON data with these fields and so on and so forth right and now you don't have to document that because everything is included right in your API and your client will adapt it and use your API in a somewhat self-explanatory fashion because everything is kind of dynamic. Make sense? Do you have any questions on hypermedia? ヘクサコーナジューマの so what I just showed you um, was a specific content type. There are actually a sum of somewhat hypermedia enabled content types, which are here mostly JSON plus some extra structure. So which means it's valid JSON, but in a specific structure. And what I showed you here was the so-called siren so content type. And they all have their pros and cons how they are used somewhat uh, some of them are more lightweight have some well less power but therefore are easier to use because they have less overhead less meter information え、今、今見てきたのはサイレントという形式のデータあの、を分け取っていましたが、えっと、いろんなまだあの、json と組み合わせたりとか、いろいろな方法ありますと。で、それぞれにあの、長所短所があって、どれがいいとは一概には言え
which is provided in Java E7. So what does that mean? We will uh, use the Java E7 API and only code against it and compile the whole thing and package it to a WAR file and that WAR file will be included on the application server. So we will use um, a standard Java E7 application server which loads that WAR file, the application, and then we don't need any th th third-party dependencies in our WAR file because everything we need is already on the server, right? So our WAR file will only include the classes we write in there. And that's it. And having that said, that's it. It doesn't work. <laughs> With this internet, it's probably too slow. Yeah, as you can see, everything is live here. So, it was not even created. Yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> I think we can't do this in the offline mode, which is not good. Okay, but anyway, we can create it from scratch. So we will use IntelliJ. In this case, this is... Let's see what we got here. I actually never did this on this here, but oh, maybe we can do... Maybe this one. Ready... Artifact, let's call it Juxores Hypermedia. Hopefully IntelliJ will help us here. We will use IntelliJ to create um, the project. Normally I use, oh, sounds good. Actually, this is pretty empty. Yeah, it probably tries to load the, um, the same information again from, uh, from Maven. As I said, on a normal <laughs> working internet, this is pretty fast. But here it somehow doesn't work. So we can even stop that. What we need here on this side is um, we now have a, um, have a Maven project, right? With um, a packaging war. And we need some dependencies. And we will use the Java E dependency only without anything else. And now, of course, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> so I will have to look it up in another project of mine, how the POM file looks like. And hopefully, this will be loaded faster. Yes. As you can see, everything is live. So all of these accidents can happen. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. We will. So as you can see, this is the Java E7 API. And now we also need some properties to tell it that we will run Java 8. So we will use Java E7 together with Java 8 here. And that's pretty much it, what we need. So we will close that because it didn't work. And now um, we also need some folders here. Normally you don't have to create this um, per hand because normally it works to, to use a Maven archetype or to use a new project from scratch. Mark directory as sources root and now we are ready to go. This is something I normally don't also write by myself. This is the Juxares application bootstrap. It extends application from um, JuxRS and it will have an application. Do I need to increase the font size? Probably. Is this better? Application path, which we call resources. And and that's it. This is just a JuxRS application. We will need to bootstrap the whole process. And now we can include our example, finally. <laughs> so our example in the presentation was about books. So we will create a books resource right here. 
and this will be a Juxrs root resource. So you put the add path annotation on it with the path books. And now we will need to um, include two methods, the method for a list of books and f for one specific book, for what we had in the presentation as well. So now we, uh, we will um, return a list of books here, which will be created. And this is just a simple POJO with some information we want, like an ID, a name, an author, and maybe a price. By the way, please don't do money calculations with floating point numbers in real world projects, right? This is just an example. And some getters and setters, of course, and just for to be convenient, um, a custom constructor. That is, by the way, a really cool feature from IntelliJ 2016 version. With Control Alt Shift, you can swap and left right. You can swap um, method arguments or parameters here. Very good. If you're using IntelliJ, what I would highly recommend. And now we got the list of books in our Juxres resource. And as this is a Java E um, enterprise project, we probably need to load the books from some EJB, right? So this is what you would normally do. Let's call it bookstore um, in your in your real world project. And normally you would probably load your data from a database or something like that. But now um, we will just return the data as dummy objects created here in this methods because it's now simpler and we want to um, to focus on the JAXRS site and not on the EJB site. So we will um, create just new two new dummy books with um, the name Java, author written by Duke, and a price, and a second book with uh, Hello Sendai, and that's it. And our books resource, we will access this EJB, the books here, and return them in our JAXRS method. And this is of course boring, because it doesn't contain anything hypermedia related, right? We want to include links here, of course. <laughs> and therefore, we go um, to the book again and give the possibility to include some links here. And we will use so that it will look somewhat like this example. We will use JSON as well. And it should include some data here with relations and URIs, right? So we will have a map with string and URI links. No, that is not the URI I want to have. JavaNet and this map, which is a hash map. And as I said, we will produce JSON in this case. And with the add producers annotation, we, d uh, we tell the JAXRS implementation that we want to output application, or actually that we output something here, which will be a media type application JSON. And even though we use JSON, we can use JAXB annotations to control the JSON out output because JAXB is included in the Java E7 umbrella and ja um, JSON is not yet included. But all of the application servers um, include this to output JSON as well. And all of the JSON implementations make use of the, JAXRS, uh, of the JAXB annotations. So you can actually use add XML element to modify the output with, for example, underscore links, even if it's JSON. 
and the JSON implementation will take care of that. And maybe we also want to exclude the ID to not get included in your JSON response, right? So we can use XML transient on this. And the normal um, JAXB bootstrap thing, which tells us that we annotate the fields here. And this will work even though it's JSON. Questions so far? No questions? If you mean uh, JSON implementation is included in the Java, Java E7. Yes. No, it's no, um, no, it's, it's not included in the, the uh, no, yeah. not yet. It's not included in the umbrella, but it, or at least there is no specification to control the output like for JAXB it is here, like with uh, add XML. This will be included in Java E8 called JSONB, like mm -hmm. JAXB, yeah. But this is for the future. But right now, you can use this to uh, modify the uh, JSON output because all of the JSON mapping frameworks, for example, Jackson, might be included in the application server, will take care of that oh. and use this. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for the question. <laughs> no, no problem. Any other questions so far? まあ、使えるという話に思えたんですけど、なんかね、そう知識ある方面白かった。And <laughs> the point is by using this and not maybe like like the Jackson annotations with at JSON something, you can still stay lean and use no third-party dependencies and this will work using Java E7 only. And now we want to include the links in our resource, right? So now we want to um, go over all books and add some links, right? So that we have something like this with the book slash one two three four five here. And and as we're using Java E seven to together with Java eight, we of course um, will use hello fancy lambdas and streams to access all of the books. So. We will now have book get links to access the links map link map of each book and add something like a self relation oops with uh, self URI. And this URI will be created here. And now of course we don't want to repeat ourselves all over again how this URI is created, like books combined with the slash, combined with the ID of the actual book, right? So now we have to use a functionality from JAXRS, which helps us to create the URIs from the information which is already there. And the name, and the name of this class is URI info, and this is a component from JAXRS which can be injected using at context, and with this component you can create URIs in a programmatically way, which uses the information which is already there, like this. You get a base URI builder, and then you can actually point to a path of a JAXRS resource class. And this will now access this class, which is this class here, and use the add path annotation and precisely the value in there. And we'll create a URI containing a path part of this value here. And oops, of course, you can also point to a method. with um, with a string here get book and this is a method which not doesn't exist yet this will be the second method we will create which points to a specific book a specific book resource like books slash and then the id right and it will use a path parameter to access this and this will return a single book here 
get book and inject the path parameter provided in the URL using the add path param annotation. This will be an ID. And this will be injected in the Juxres resource when it's called in the IOC container. And we will impl uh, implement this in a minute. But using dot path books resource class with the uh, string name will give us this path here, the curly bracket ID curly bracket path parameter. And of course, for the URI, we want to have the real um, URI, not with the real ID here. So we can use the dot build method to build the URI, and we can provide some arguments like the ID here, which will be used to substitute this path parameter so that the URI will look like book slash whatever ID you provide here. Questions so far? This will now create the URI for each book and add it to the links resource. And now... Now we will code the second example, which also creates a dummy book here in the EJB, provi uh, which would search for a single book uh, using the ID. But now we will just create the book here in the same way with the same ID and return it. And of course, we access this book as well using the ID provided from the path parameter. And now this book gets also an URI. Of course, we will copy paste program here and also gets a link which is added to the links map here. And then the book will be returned. Questions? No questions so far? Okay, then we will try to run this example. And although our Maven problems were before, it hopefully works. No, I don't want to have that. Um, where did I create it? I think it was here. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, sounds good. So we will use Maven. So we will use the default Maven clean install command to build and run this example. And let me just um, look at the WAR file if everything. No, that doesn't look okay. Install, did we use just one moment? The packaging WAR file dependencies. I just have to take a look here because it didn't include all the classes. Here, snapshot with packaging war file dependencies with Java E API and the properties. Source Java. Oh, I, r I, I accidentally, yeah, this only happens because I um, because I did it from scratch. Source main Java is the normal name. So I made a mistake here. Let's do this on the command line so because it's faster. Sorry, this normally doesn't uh, happen, but everything, as I said, Java main, main Java. <laughs> we use this and then move it, and now it looks correct. Um, the problem was that my classes, yeah, and now they will be compiled, was in this uh, in the wrong directory. This won't this won't happen if you use Maven as you should use it, not like. Uh, I was using it because the internet didn't work, but as you can see, it worked though. And now we have the WAR file, and as you can see, and this is what I said before, the WAR file is basically empty. It, pro it contains only the classes which we added, and no third-party dependencies, no big JAR files, and as you can see, it is pretty small, not even 6K. And if you have some other lightweight <laughs> in uh, quotes enterprise framework you will have megabytes of jar files right but here you don't need it and now we will run the example on wildfly 
this will be uh, run on a recent Warfly 9 or 10, I'm not sure. And as we have a very small war, fi war, war file, it is very fast as well. And it's, yep, already done. And now we can use any REST client of our choice to access this example because we're using an HTTP API. And I would use Postman, but then everybody would complain on the font size. So I will use the command line here as well. And actually, it doesn't matter what you use because this is HTTP only. You could use whatever tool you like to access your application. Um, the name was Juxeres Hypermedia with resources. Yeah, I know, you can see it. But as you can see, this is the JSON output here from this resource. Let's put it a little bit smaller. And let's do some fancy command line magic to pretty print it here. And as you can see, we have the JSON array of your books with, and this is the important part, the URI pointing to each book. And of course, we can also query a single book, which will give us a JSON object of a single book here. Yeah, Questions so far? So now I will show you another um, reason. Now I will have to include this again. Why JaxRS is very helpful here, and why I used the base URI, URI builder here. If you access your um, application here with another domain, so I used my host file to point that local domain to um, local host. And if I use this, JaxRS will take care of it and create a URI with the correct domain as it was requested from the client because that get base URI builder makes use of the, um, the information from the current client HTTP request, which is very helpful if you have an enterprise project with a proxy server up front, like an Ap Apache or an Nginx, then you don't ha need to configure anything here in your Java E application, but use the JaxRS component and it will work as you would expect it, because the link will be created with the correct domain. Question so far. So now let me show you another example. If you have something like this here with a more complex example, right, in your response, if you would do this um, with Pojos as well as we da just did before, then you would have a really complex object hierarchy, right, with a list of actions and which contains a lot of properties and then nested objects and so on and so forth. And this is, of course, cumbersome and a lot of effort to create. So I will show you another example how this can be accomplished in a more simple way, using Java E still. So Java E7 includes a nice API. I will delete here everything again, which is called JSONP API. Java API for JSON processing, which can, in fact, create JSON objects in a programmatic way, which we want here. So for the first example, we will have a JSON array. And this comes from the JSONP API, javax.json. And now we will have the same story again um, with the books. And of course, we will use Java 8 features again. So we are mapping each book to a JSON object now with the following logic. So we will use json.createObjectBuilder which gives us a builder pattern-like object builder, which can be used to add some strings as JSON properties, like name with value book get name, and, oops, and author, what we had before, uh, book.getAuthor, and the price, right, with the price, and of course, the links again. And now, as you can see, we can modify the output as we want it to be. 
and this will be a nested JSON object, we, which we will create up here. JSON object, which will of course come from another JSON object builder, which includes our URIs here with the self URI. And this will be the same just as before. And unfortunately, I deleted it, so we will have to rewrite it again. This will be again the URI info with the base URI builder, just as before. And now we create the URI in the same way. Get book with the build method, which gives us the URI. And JSONP doesn't support URIs, it only supports string and primitive values. So we will have to call dot to string on the URI to create a string out of it and add the string to the um, JSON object builder. And with dot build, we will create the JSON object agra again, just as we would down here. And this will now create JSON objects in the map method to map the string of books sorry, the stream of books to a stream of JSON objects. And now we would have to collect the stream of JSON objects, no, not this one, into a JSON array, right? So we will call, we will use fancy method handles to create an array builder and JSON array builder, colon, colon, add, and JSON array builder, colon, colon, add, to add it in a JSON array builder and with the dot build, we will create a JSON array out of it. And this JSON array will then be returned in this method here. Questions? No questions? You sure? You still get nice stickers. Okay, so let's implement the second example with the single book again. So we'll now have the single book, and of course we will copy-paste program again. Don't do this in production. In real world project you would outsource all this logic here, how the objects are created into a specific component, like a CDI managed bean, into a specific class for example, right? So now we will have the same thing here, again with the books, for one single book. And this will return not a book, but a JSON object here, a si uh, s single JSON object with all these links just as before. But this time we probably want to have another link, the add to cart relation, which I talked about in the slides, which will be an, let's call it add to cart URI, dot to string. And this will be, of course, also created using the Java E component URI info, right? Which gives us the base URI builder and then a path of a resource which doesn't exist yet. Call it cart resource. And we will create the resource. No. Create class. Yes. No. No. Package. Yeah. And this will be just an empty um, JAXRS resource class called shopping cart. It doesn't matter if this is empty, it will just be used to gather the information from the add path annotation here, right? So I will close it again, it doesn't matter, but we will need it to create the URI, which will be included in the JSON object here then, right? And now this will be added to the JSON object down there, in the JSON links again, and that's it. Questions? So we will run this again and rebuild it using maven clean install and it's still very fast as we are still java e7 only and now we will rerun it on wildfly and hopefully it works so we will call the same method just as before it still has the JSON output, this time created by the JSONP functionality. It's a JSON array. And if we call um, the single resource here, it will now include 
the URI from the add to cart relation pointing to the shopping cart. Questions? So why did I use the JSONP example here? Now you see that you have the full control how your JSON looks like, right? So now it's no effort to do things like that. With a crazy complex JSON output, whatever your, context, um, your content type might look like for your hi hypermedia API, and now you're free to do whatever you like with less effort because you do it, you're doing it in a programmatic way. Questions so far? On hypermedia in general or what I showed you or JaxRS in particular? No questions? Then let me show you a live example of this. This is a GitHub project of mine. It's called JaxRS Hypermedia. And it uses a similar approach, what I showed in the slides, but with a more concrete and comprehensive example. And hopefully the internet might work again, yes. And as you can see, this is also about books. It uses the Siren content type again, but now with more, <laughs> more time. And everything implemented here, it also has a shopping cart with some actions which uh, actually can be used. And the interesting part is here how the response is created in your server. And it has several approaches. And this is similar to what I showed you here. This is a Siren example with plain EE, which means it uses uh, JSONP again. And now this is what I just talked about. It uses a single component, a CDI managed bean, which contains all the logic, how your POJOs in your application is are mapped to the JSONP objects, the JSON object. Like this called build book, out of a book and it will create a JSON object here with a lot of logic how your siren output actually looks like with all the properties and stuff you need in your hypermedia content type. And this is one single class, so a single point of responsibility. You only have to write it once and still you don't need any third party dependencies. As you can see, this is just Java E7 only and still you have a fully comprehensive example of a hypermedia API implemented with Java E. Um, my GitHub account is Estashna. The project is Juxeres Hypermedia. You can look it up if you want and see several approaches how hypermedia API with Java E can be accomplished. Do you have any questions left on what I showed you? He just understand how <laughs> half of it, but the still, you know, want to ask, ask some questions. So, yeah. Can you uh, speak into the microphone? Oh, sorry. Yeah. He's just try trying to find out what what's a uh, you know good point about using Jax RS and uh, he's uh, what what he asking is that uh, uh, when you oh, one second we need to response to me. Okay, so so you know it's it's, it's included to the re uh, uh, link to the resource mm -hmm. like uh, you know relation is self and uh, yep, you know yep. slash 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 and uh, is that is that a way make it easier for the next request? He's asking. Um, uh, you said uh, what's the point of using JaxRS or what's the point of using Hypermedia? Okay, so probably right. Uh, he thinks you know. What's uh, the point of using Hypermedia? Yes. Yeah. So um, the point is. Actually, if you include these links here in your response directly, then you're making it already easier to the client to do the next request. 
because now you're linking to uh, to to the somewhat related resource what you may have and what you what you may access next in your API directly. For example, with these books here, you accessed one book, and then you provided all the links the c the client may need to know, like the actions. How do I add this specific book to my shopping cart? And then the information is already there, and that's even simpler for the client because it doesn't need to have that implicit logic from your documentation coded in your client. Well, if I need to um, add the book to the shopping cart, then I need to post this and that information to that resource, which would be fixed. But now here you include that information already in the response from the server. And now the client only needs to know like this add to cart relation, what I showed you, and some generic way how your content type is used using that data. And then it can use your API in a self-explanatory fashion, which is very easy once you get this kind of generic client which knows that hypermedia content type and knows how these actions are used in general and then it can follow the resources. Does this answer your question? No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for which exam example you would need hypermedia or not? Uh, yeah. No, she's, as, as or she's asking that, that uh, you know, uh, 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 are there yeah, uh, examples? Check, you know, where, where, where can he find the, the ah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, s examples? Um, for example, here on the <laughs> my project page, um, there are actually some hypermedia enabled um, uh, APIs out there, uh, getting more and more. There aren't too much today. Uh, GitHub has a new API, for example, which uses hypermedia or somewhat hypermedia. It still needs a lot of documentation. I haven't found one, uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, too much hypermedia enabled API so far. So mostly you still have some kind of documentation, but still providing links only, which is already a big plus. So most of them are giving you links where you can access the next inf uh, uh, resource, but not already giving you some kind of actions where you would document everything like this post example, right? So these are still pretty rare. The GitHub uh, one is uh, how you could, uh, where you could look at, or you just maybe search for a content type which you would like to use, like the siren, and then you uh, search for a siren re uh, reword example. Mm -hmm. And this will be one example of this kind of Hello World bookstore, but with all the actions needed to add a book to a shopping cart, to check uh, the shopping cart out, to have some orders, stuff like that, which I included in the project. And also, you wha wha where can you find, you know, the, the actual website or something, you know, or in, the, in the world, you know, so it's... Which, uh, wi which wex uh, website, sorry? Uh, which, you know, whatever wi website implemented this, this idea. I mean, you know, actual, actual site, you know, you can well find you would have to Google it, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there are a few examples li like a GitHub um, API and a uh, few yeah. more well-known well, well known examples, but actually it's, it's mostly the case that you have some kind of REST API in whatever you would use, and then you have more or less documentation de depending on if you use some kind of hypermedia or not, and then de depending on that. Yeah. But so far, unfortunately, ha I haven't found an example which really so fulfilled so all of yeah. this hypermedia levels approach. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your questions. You already got a sticker, very good. Any other questions? Yes, please. Uh, she, she means that uh, the yes. spring is old, obs obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> that is a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, Stephen is laughing. <laughs> so the question was uh, whether <laughs> she is using spring, and the question was uh, whether spring is obsolete now. Well, actually, 
as <laughs> I, I I won't say the, these words, but since uh, Java E6 or Java E7, it's it's really easy. Uh, may, maybe in the past, Spring would be easier to use, definitely. But but now it's very easy to use um, Java E7, as you just saw. It's it's very simple. You don't need very much. And I would say even for the hypermedia examples, you could do a lot with uh, with Java E because in Spring it's always advertised that you can use I think Spring Data and Spring Data Link JPI um, with with the hypermedia something I don't know the names, um, but also using these approaches uh, they they also have their pros and cons. In, in Spring you can uh, you can add some link using annotations to your POJOs which I would say doesn't give you enough power which you would need as you could do in the JSONP approach here. So uh, I it's uh, I, I wouldn't say one is better than the others. Uh, they, are, they are kind of similar approaches but different in the detail. But, but I would say you could use both frameworks to uh, accomplish similar things. In, in Java E mostly uh, it's the case that everything is there already. So you mostly, if you know what you're doing, don't need any third-party dependencies like I just did with Java E7, which includes JSONP. If you would, and this is where I'm not sure about Spring, I've done a lot of Spring in the past, but I'm not sure if you could use a programmatic approach to um, create JSON objects out of the box. So maybe you could, what you could do indeed, is to include JSONP if it's not already there in J Spring, and I'm pretty sure it's not already, th it's not there. Maybe some other functionality, but I guess not. So probably you would need some third party dependency and then it works that uh, in your Spring REST controller, you um, return JSON objects as well. I guess so. But I, I would say it's simpler to go with an EE way. And if you start a new Greenfield project, which is not Spring, for example, already, then it's definitely worth to have a look at a recent Java E version, Java E7 with Java 8, for example, and to go with that. It's definitely possible to implement a hypermedia API without any third party help yeah thank you very much for the question do I have other questions or anybody else <laughs> yes don't hesitate to ask ask me anything all right so if you don't have any other questions then thank you very much for your attention <laughs>